Good morning, everyone. I hope this finds you well. I've got to get all my things pulled up here. I, mean, I don't want sound effects. Okay, today is Monday, January 29th, 24. How can that even be, right? I'm going to make sure people are getting on. I see numbers coming up. That's great. And uh, got, I got a lot of really great questions still in the coffer here, right here. So I want to go through a couple things first while people log on. Um, I think I've got some pretty good images to share with you today. Let me see if I can get... There we go. I got to tell you, I went to do an interview the other day two actually after last Wednesday and this whole program just blew up and I was so upset because John I mean I had to abort both of the interviews and I'll be doing them today after this but John worked on it and worked on it and worked on it you know we've been doing this since the original what 2020 with the pandemic no idea what was going on and then all of a sudden at two o'clock it just started working again I got gremlins in my computer or something. So here we go. People are coming on. Yay. All right. Let's, we're going to do questions today, but I got, we're going to wrap up with that. I'm telling you, and originally last week I said I was only going to do it one day, but the questions are really good. I mean, like really good. That makes me happy that that's who's hanging out here. So what do we have going on here? Okay. Catherine sent me this tie block that she did and she wanted to do the one and she's going to do a whole quilt out of it. I can't wait to see it. And you can see that she used like Dupiani for the background and for the center. And she said, it's of course foundation paper pieced. And when she got the hang of it, it was not an issue. But again, people working with silk is a whole thing that we know if you tried it. And then Cheryl, okay, this is interesting, is working on our pick a petal. <clears throat> and I think, <coughs> excuse me, this was, it was ham, ham piece. And it ended up shrinking up. So she put this blue border on here. Cheryl, I'm going to say something you're not going to want to hear. You may end up taking that blue border off and putting something else on. I wouldn't, I mean, as a standalone, a pillow, that's fantastic. But as this blends into the, the bigger picture of the quilt, you might find it's too strong. Just saying. So be open to that. But congratulations on trying the hand piecing. And really, from where I'm sitting, you did a magnificent job. And then I found this on Facebook. I don't know the person, but her name was Teresa. And those are ties. Those are ties in that bug. So I, I just love the creativity that's out there. And yeah. So also on Facebook, I know a lot of you don't have anything to do with Facebook. I like it because I never know what I'm going to stumble on. How about Carol Breyer Fowler Gentry? Gent, Gentry. I asked her when we hung up from the interview that aired uh, a couple weeks ago, which was maybe even last Wednesday, excellent. If you didn't watch it, go watch it. It was excellent. And it wasn't because of my hosting ability. It was because of Carol and how organized she was and how she walked us through her process. So we learned that she works uh, with a computer. We learned that she has her fabric printed at Spoon Flower so she can get all these wonderful gradations and then it doesn't fade like hand dyes might. So I asked her, what are you working on now? And she said, well, you know those rugs and stuff that look like you're falling into a hole? Well, that's what she's working on, and that's what she was showing on Facebook. I mean, look at that work. She is just, to me, amazing. So thank you for posting it, Carol. We like that. Okay, before we get going, I want to talk about my friend Wendy and taking classes. Wendy has, let's see, what's this first one? Has an affinity for fine handwork. This is really small, people. She loves it. She loves it. She loves it. And I would like to say that she's 
darn good at it. She has been on the quilt show a couple times. These are very small pieces, very small. I'm, I'm getting somewhere here now. And let's take another piece of hers. But she's not just about stitching. She's about a lot of things. And one of the things she did on the show was silk ribbon applique. And these were kind of spun off from the same thing. These are hand dyed ribbons. And here, let's take a looky, looky, looky at this up close. Just beautiful. She is a master at handwork and actually of just about anything. So in the meantime, it's always been a dream of hers to go to the um, Royal School of Needlework in England, in London, and it just so happens there's a pilot program here in San Francisco, a sister, a sisterhood, same thing in the state. And so she signed up for a class and she was so darn excited, she couldn't stand it. Meryl had to drop out and she wanted to know if I wanted to go and I'm just not of that precision. I'm more sloppy sloppy. All right. So she uh, is, she's traveling on business right now, but yesterday I thought, okay, Wendy, send me pictures of what you did. And I think this is really important to pay attention to. They did, they did not work on a master project. They went through, um, cartwheel after cartwheel after cartwheel of fabulous stitches and things you can do. So this is, how, you can see her fingers behind there. Some of the stuff was this minute. Okay. And oh, her teacher was um, uh, Lucy Barter. Okay. And then this is the ultimate goal of the uh, classes. The idea is you take and you learn all these different stitches and all these different things, and then you put together your own little piece that kind of you know shows off what you know. This might take a year to do, but it's basically how you get apprenticed into the whole program. She was high as a skite, because high as a skite, I just saw somebody Oh, no, so <laughs> high, high as a kite with the whole thing. And to me, it was, I, it, it would make me crazy. So you have to kind of understand where your limit is. I like to talk a really tough game on um, perfection, but those are the, just the rules that I give myself to get the best chance that I can get of getting it right. So, okay, everybody's here pretty much. All right. So I'm going to go, <clears throat> we left off. John must have seen this in the uh, questions last time. It's what weight of thread do I use for hand binding? You're going to be surprised at this. I usually, in the olden days, would use my 50 cotton. I'm using my 80 weight poly that is um, really fine stuff. It's stronger than the cottons and it doesn't break, and it hides like silk. So that is uh, Quilter Select 80 weight. I love that thread. You know I do. I go on and on about it, and I'll go on and on about it a little bit more. All right, so thread sizes and uses. You know, what you're going to find here is I go through some of these questions. There's not the ultimate answer for what thread, when. And the more you work with different threads, the more you will become familiar with how they react and what do they do. And I've got a case in point coming here with, well, with this, with this. Okay, Suzanne got hold of me and she wanted to talk about quilting her silk quilt. Well, she did something really smart is she made some samples. Well, I think she actually did quilt on it and had to tear it out. This is what she, she found on her silk quilt I don't know what batting she was using. I don't know what backing she was doing, but that's why you always do a sample piece, you know, just with the tie, just layer stuff that you know you're gonna be working with. She, this is what she came to. She tried two other threads before she settled on uh, Superior Mono Poly on top, and then my 80 weight Quilter Select on the bobbin. So what she, when she put the 60 weight Quilter Select on top, 
it got lost on the top. I don't know exactly what that means, but it wasn't satisfactory to her at all, all right? And then, this is interesting. She tried a metallic, and it wouldn't even stitch. So, you know, I'm going to say this too. If you are on a machine and you're trying something like metallic, something that's a little has a little personality, make sure you lower the tension on top. Maybe take it, the default should be around five, maybe take it down to about 2.5. Um, the Monopoly worked the best for her in her specific situation, all right? <laughs> this is the part that I thought was so funny. It kind of had a bit of a snail slime look to it, <laughs> but it was in keeping with her silk, so her quilts, oh, I don't know. But the bottom line is here, I can't tell you what the end-all be-all is. I can tell you what my go-tos are, but of course there's always room for change. And we've got more questions about that too. All right. Oh, this is, I don't want to say it's weird because I don't want to make Linda. Linda was taking a class, okay, and her... Her suggestion was that, you know, like how when you pin, you're, you, you go under, you go up, and then you go down on the top, and you're looking at that so you can take out the pins if you want to. Well, this teacher, not Linda, suggests that you put your pins on the bottom. Now, I wrote back to uh, Linda and said, what, what was her reasoning on that? That kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies, and I will tell you why. And actually, I ended up calling um, Jeannie Delpit that works at Bernina, and she knows all this stuff. And I said, what, why? She'd never heard of it, but what might be the issues? I'll tell you what the issue might be, whether you sew over pins or not, and I think it might be more likely if it were on the bottom, is if your needle hits that pin and it breaks, it could go into your machine, the pin breaks, it could go into your machine, and then you are into major league, the language of quilting, okay? I actually broke a needle on my 1230, my coveted 1230, an old machine, and the needle there went down into the mechanics, and I had to ship the machine back to Chicago, where the guys from Switzerland work, and they had to fix it. Which brings me to another point. If you go into our garage and look up in the attic, you're going to see a bunch of Bernina boxes, period, with all the guts of the packing of it. I never throw away the, the, the packaging that the machine comes in, ever, because you never know if it has to um, be... Um, respirated in another part of the country, I guess you could say, <laughs> respirated, <laughs> right? So, okay, now, so Catherine said, I used silk thread on the top and glide on the bottom when she quilted her silk quilt. Somebody else asked about needles. I, I, I always used to go what's ever on my machine, and if it's acting wacky, then I try another needle. And sometimes when you're working with really fine thread, a, t a needle in your machine a 70 might be very appropriate because it's fine, but it's all in the cooking and the testing of what you are doing. Okay, Paul, I really like this one, all right? Has my color palette evolved or changed? Oh, yeah, but I'm going to tell you the second part, he said. He hasn't, I'm, th I'm figuring it's a guy, and that's shame, shame on me because my name is Alex. Um, he hasn't figured out his personal color path, always making quilts for others. I think one of the best ways to broaden your color palette is to work in a color family that makes you exceedingly uncomfortable, and you can do that by starting with the focus fabric with those colors. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it. Has mine evolved? Yes, because in the olden days, I would rather die than work with a fall palette. I just oranges and browns, and bleh, all that. Who needs that? Oh, guess what, what one of my go-tos now is? It's that. I was forced to work into that with that palette in working with fabric that makes me uncomfortable. Now, that said, um, 
the fact that you haven't found a personal color path kind of makes me happy. I, I don't think you should have to worry about that. Whatever makes your heart sing, do it. Whatever makes you uncomfortable, do it. There shouldn't be a piece of fabric, let's say a focus fabric, that you pick up that you can't work with. And remember maybe about a month and a half ago, I had that video with Amy from CNT, and it was how to work with a fo focus fabric in a more sophisticated way using this, not just using every single color that's in it. So if you didn't see this, you might want to go to our YouTube channel and, and look for Amy, um, Amy at CNT and the Essential Color Card deck, and that will help you out too. I love that you don't know what your palette is. That makes my heart happy. Okay, Miss Karen, you, you, you sent me this question. I had to go to Miss Dr. Google, all right, because I didn't know. Um, when cleaning the nozzle of a, okay, how do you clean the nozzle of a basting spray? Because it can get clogged. I guess, I don't know. I use our Quilter Select powder, so I don't do that. The spray base makes me crazy because I don't want to do it in the backyard. I want to be in my house, and the over sprays too much. But I did find it on YouTube with the help of Dr. Google. And what they said to do, I have no idea if it's going to work or not, take off the nozzle and soak it in warm water for a while with, of course, soap in it, all right? And then the person doing it took a safety pin because I think it's a little bit um, hardier than a pin that we might use to pin our things or maybe a T pin or something, but it was a safety pin in this and then just keep jamming it in it and pull it out and then gunk will come. Push in, pull out, and junk will come out. You let me know if that works. <laughs> I thought, because I thought you're just in trouble, period. The end of that. All right. Okay. Oh, Jude, this is a good question. What are the short-term and long-term goals of TQS? <laughs> I will tell you. When it started, Ricky and I gave each other a 10-year pinky swear that we'd stick with it. All right? And we have certainly had our highs, and we have certainly had our lows. And right now, I will tell you, we're into 15 years and over around 500 shows. And, of course, new shows are being added, you know, twice a month. And really, as long as we are able, we want to keep doing this because we understand the importance of the product we're giving quilters worldwide. For 49 bucks a year, say a month, no, a year, um, we can we can sustain along with the help of Bernina and along with the help of our store. I adore everything about the site except the site itself, and we're madly trying to put together a, a new site that will be more user-friendly and yada, yada, yada. It's taking really long. So I would just suggest that you support us so we can keep going. This industry will never dry up from wonderful things. And honestly, I don't know where else, uh, you know, where you can go and know you're going to be getting good information. Sometimes I'll go to YouTube. Oh, let's go back to the nozzle. And it's maybe not the correct information. So... Just because it's on the web, just because it's on the internet, doesn't mean it's true. It's true with us. All right? Okay, then Laura asked me, what's my favorite quilt pattern? That's a Sophie choice. However, I'll tell you what put me on, my map, on the map. My book, Simply Stars. And I would travel all over and teach how to make these different stars. And it was interesting because, well, it started as a quilting tutorial, piecing tutorial of weirdo shapes and how they don't line up and ironing and all that, it also turned into a fabric combination tutorial. So I would have to say stars, but I haven't made a star in 100 years, but that's the one that kind of got me here, all right? Okay, and then, and then Laura asked about 80 bobbin on the bottom and 60 on top. Anything I wouldn't do with it, yeah. And we just learned from Suzanne why it didn't work for her. So I'm telling you, so far, I always use 80 on the bobbin, but sometimes the um, 60 on top might change out. 
okay, where might it change out? When I go to quilt, I'm working on a quilt right now. I showed you the other day. I might put 80 on top and 80 on the bobbin if I want, well, 80 will be on the bobbin, if I want the look of silk thread. That's how fine it is, and yet it's very, very strong. You can spend a lot of money on thread. <laughs> I don't know if you know that. I think it might be more dangerous than fabric, because I certainly have. But anyways, I would... Um, there's always exceptions to every rule. And I do think that that's why this is such a fun craft to be involved in, art form, because there's so much you can do. And in fact, on Wednesday, and I'll talk about that coming up soon, you're going to see something that that we've shared before, but I had forgotten about, and it's with Andrea, Bro Andrea Brokenshire. So we just hit everything, everything, and I love that. All right, what's next? Oh, and Laura, am I in the future forward? In future, forward future, I have dyslexia. Um, <clears throat> am I going to do a Demon quilt pattern or create one? That's a solid no. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> However, there's a guy, an artist, I think he's in London, and I wish I had looked this up before this. He is doing killer stuff with denim. He's creating like, and I think we've done a field piece on him. He's creating things like um, environments, uh, three-dimensional environments out of denim. If somebody knows his name, I'd really appreciate it if you typed it in right here. Okay. Thank you, Paul, for supporting us. All right. Again, solid no. Of course, never say no because... That's when you end up doing it. All right. I even ended up getting a tattoo. <laughs> and when I told Ricky, he goes, what, did you get your eyes done like my mom did? <laughs> I hate you right now. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. <laughs> and it didn't hurt. I mean, they numb it and all that. Okay, I digress. Um, oh, Shelly. Love this question. Um, Shelly's precision gets shot when she has a bunch of blocks and she sews them in rows. Shelly, the same thing happens to me. I, I don't know why, but it does. So this is what I'm doing now if I can. And I learned this from the late Mary Ellen Hopkins. I sew my quilts together in neighborhoods. I think, I think also when I sewed them in rows, I am so over that quilt by the time I get to that that I become very careless and sloppy. So try sewing them in neighborhoods and not in rows. And I'd like to know if that works for you. Yeah, okay. Okay, then Mary is having free motion issues, uh, stitch quality. She uses gloves, um, but, what, but, what, but what else? Okay. Sometimes when I'm sitting on my Q20, I will lower the top tension a little bit for stitch quality, but I think you're talking about stitch inconsistency, where this part might be really good, and then you'll, you know, and you, you move off that way. I started machine quilting before the Bernina Stitch Regulator came out. I was in the middle of writing a book on machine quilting, kind of a beginning how to get started, and I was... Um, presented with this machine with Stitch Regulator. And I sat down, and the president of Bernina was sitting there, USA, and it didn't work, okay? I mean, like, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do it because I was so uptight and so... Ugh. So I learned to machine quilt without the Stitch Regulator, and it took me 150 hours. I'm a slow learner. If I had used the domestic Stitch Regulator on the Bernina, if it took me 150, all right, probably would have taken me 15 hours, um, just a fraction of that. I think sometimes when we sit down to machine quilt, we are our own worst enemy. You know, Dee, who teaches on Saturday, well, her daughter sat down in college or even high school, and the one in my kid's book, she's, she could machine quilt just like that because she didn't have any demons in her head 
you know, you can't do that. You can't do that. The other thing I found too, that I know a lot of you will relate to, when I'm at my machine and I'm feeling this going on, get up and walk away. Walk away, all right? Now, the Q20 has a double stitch regulator, and I think I've shared this with you. I am so addicted to that that now when I go sit down at my domestic, I go I, 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 back to that 150 hours, so I just go over to my Q20. It's lovely. Now, the other thing that um, Mary said is that she's using gloves. Okay, that's good because that helps, you know, uh, keep things smooth. I just wanted to share these ones with QS. I've got to take advantage of an advertisement here. <laughs> And I love this. You're supposed to put it on the middle finger, but I like it here. It's got this grabby thing. It will grab the fabric. I like that my fingers are free. But the other thing you might try is there are a lot of these sort of non-slippy pads that you can put on your the bed of your machine. We chose not to put lines on it because if you don't get it exactly right, then you're really in trouble. And then okay, it's got a really funky hole in the middle. I, I cut that in because that's where the two st stitch regulator lights come up from. So, and the other thing is this thing's really easy to peel off and on. And if it stops sticking, just go wash it. So it lasts for a long, long time. All right. Jane asked about self self healing mats. Okay. Yes. Mats are I'd like to say at Quilter Select, and you have our mat, all right? It was starting to get really worn. They, they do have a shelf life, but some last longer than others. For a while back there in the good old days, there was a white mat, and I don't even know who it was by, and another mat that basically it was super, super self-healing to the point of it was inefficient and didn't work. So what I do, there's a couple things you can do. I always cut in different areas on my mat. And also with the mat you have, you can flip it over and the other side um, offers you a whole nother mat. So basically you get two for the price of one. And those are Quilters Select. Okay, and here's, here's Jane's, last but not least. Um, why is it re recommended that the seam in the quilt backing be horizontal rather than vertical? I never heard that. So I called my friend Laura Nouns and she said, oh, my seams go everywhere. She said, that's probably an old school thing. And, and I will tell you, I often piece my back so they're going in every which way. The only reason I can think of would be, and, and I don't prescribe to this, at all is that if it's on your bed and you pull up, I, I, it doesn't even make sense to me. Okay, but I will, I will tell you this: if you're going to hand quilt, you make darn sure you cut off the selvages. All right, and I probably would anyways because they can kind of gather in, you know, and cause a little bit of funkiness. So I would do that. Um, and that's another great thing of the internet and what we are providing at the quilt show. In the olden days, I love this, the olden days. You guys, I've been doing this 40 years, okay? I would travel all over teaching, and you would go to region, to region, to region. Um, I didn't travel that much outside the United States. I mean, I did some, so I'm, I'm going to say within the U.S. And you could see who the teacher was. All right, so so a teacher will come in and say X Y Z, and everyone goes, "Yeah, you're right," and and that's just what they're being taught. All right, we are people have asked, "What's the biggest innovation in quilting?" Well, I would say the rotary cutter and ruler, but I would also say our global connection that we did not enjoy. We did not enjoy 20 years ago. Didn't happen. Nope. And then Jane, thank you for this question. Oh, let me just read it. Um, the correct way to thread a needle for less knotting. Very good question. So here is my needle, all right? Here is the eye. When I go and I thread my needle, I go through my needle here, and then I come down over here. I want to do a knot that's closest to the spool. All right, 
and then the thread is going in the correct wrap and you're not working against yourself, all right? So you thread it and you knot closest to the spool. And I asked Wendy, the Royal School of Needlework, right, who went, I said, is this even true on things like this? And she said, yes. It's, I know it to be true, you know, with your regular thread. The, um, so just also, okay, sorry, something popped through my mind and John walked in. Um, it, when, sometimes you can feel the wrap and you want to be stitching in the direction of the wrap. So that's a very, very, very good question. John. What is a double stitch regulator? Um, John, can I, I'll tell you what, I'll keep talking and let me turn on the machine and I will show you. The single stitch regulator that comes on a Bernina, hold on, let me turn this thing on. Okay, we're on the Q, we're on the Q20. It's turning on, I'm not sure if that's gonna make it. Hmm, I hope I can show you. Oh, we love that sound now, don't we? Well, it's not going to show unless I start stitching, but let me see. Okay, see this and this right here. These two things, the light comes up, and that is your stitch regulator. On the domestic, there's just one that comes down. I mean, while it's wonderful, this is the bomb right here. And so you can see, let me grab my little mat, why I cut this out. Yeah, you can see it. Why I cut this out so that it didn't interfere with the stitch regulator. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's the bomb. It's the absolute bomb. Okay. Oh, I do have Bernina coupons. If you decide you want to buy a machine, I've got to send it to you before you buy it and date it. You've got a 30-day window. Somebody wrote me a week ago and said, can you please send me one? But she didn't give me her um, home address or her P.O. box or whatever. I, I, it's not a digital thing. So if you're going to ask me for one, please include your home address. And I wrote this gal back, and she has not responded, and it's been a week, and I feel really bad about it, but... It is what it is, right? Beware of no, you'll eat your words. Ian Barry, Mimi, you're right. Ian Barry is the denim person. Google him. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Oh, here's a good one. On the back swim PC, do I press the seams open? I press the seams open when six or more seams merge together. Or, or if it's just acting naughty, and I, I know I press the way the fabric tells me to press. It's, to me, harder to align seams when things are pressed open, because when they're pressed one way and the other way, they just nestle into each other, and that's it. If you're going to press your seams open, friend, and I've said this a hundred times here, okay, I'm pressing my seams open. So what's going to happen here? You're going to see the thread. So make sure the thread color is compatible with what's being pressed open. If it were a quilt I'm going to use, like on a bed, I would be much happier with them not pressed open, and I can't even tell you why. Again, that's just, you know, the stuff you, ugh. Okay, long armors find a vertical seams. Cre oh, oh, Jackie, thank you. Long armors find long vertical seams create a higher spot on the take-up roller, and that can begin to pull the quilt out of alignment. I love you guys. I, I love you guys. Jackie, you must be a long armor, or, oh, or maybe your person told you that. This is what I love about this forum, where we're at. Okay, more comments? Vertical Okay. Um, I love you guys. Oh, yeah, and how you get hold of me is Alex Anderson, A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-S-N -E at gmail.com.
Lynn, I want you to email this to me. A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-S-N -S at gmail. Lynn, please email me that. A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-S-N -S at gmail. Okay, Ian Barry. Okay, I love this. You guys are the best. You guys are the best. All right, so um, I feel like I've been... I did have two shots this morning of coffee. If I'm espresso. That might explain a lot. Okay, so Lilo caught up with Andy, Andrea Brokenshire at Houston, and we got a interview with her. And then I'm going to take us to a small tutorial we have on how she actually does what she's sharing with us at with, with Lilo. So I'm very excited about that. Lynn, got it. All right. Uh, Lynn, I'm going to be looking for your email. I would love to pop that in the mail for you today. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys Wednesday with Andrea. Uh, oh, and it says, who, will, will Barb be on this Friday? Barb's here. Yeah. Right, John? Barb, you're here. And Susan, re-remind me what you emailed me in a month. I will forget it again. Um... And also, also, okay, Barb will be here on Friday, and then, of course, Dee will be here on Saturday. Barbara's going, yes! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for asking. Okay, I will see you guys Wednesday. Bye.